Welcome to the Light Up Your Business podcast, the show where we dive deep into the world of small businesses. I'm your host, Tammy Hirschberger, and each episode will bring you inspiring stories, expert insights, and practical tips to help your small business thrive. Whether you're an entrepreneur just starting out or a seasoned business owner, this podcast is your go-to source for success in the small business world. Let's get started. Hi, everyone. We're back for another episode of Light Up Your Business Podcast. I have a very special guest today. I have Justin Rand with Blue Jay Window Cleaning. How are you, Justin? I am good. How are you? I'm very good. Good. So we are going to talk about him and his business. So he started his business, has it been a year ago already? It was July of last year. How long has that been? How many months? Mm, Half a year. Half year. Okay. So, you know, I bring people on that talk about starting their business. Justin is one of them that actually has done it. He has gotten out of the infancy stage. He's passed the fear of like, what if I can't do it? And he started it. So my question uh, right off the bat, Justin, I want you to tell my listeners about you. Who are you, Justin? Uh, so my name is Justin Rand. I'm 32. I am a single dad and yeah, I own my own business and it's still growing, but I just heard single ladies. So if anyone needs a business owner <laughs> with a son, Justin's available. You can email me at light up your business podcast. No, I'm kidding. Um, so you have a son. And so what do you do for fun, Justin? Uh, snowboard. I love snowboarding. Um, and then just spending time with my son, whether it be watching movies or going to the park, or going rollerblading, just anything with him is fun. Yeah. Um, how does it work? Was it scary starting a business with a child? Like, cause you are divorced, so you're a single dad. So how, what is that? Just tell everybody quickly, like what that's like. It's terrifying. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're responsible for providing what he needs and, <clears throat> and without an hourly income, it's very scary. Yeah. But, what made you get over the hurdle of like the fear? Cause a lot of people get lost in that. I see it all the time. They're terrified to start a business. Like they have the idea, like it sounds so cool and you get to do nothing and you can do what you want. And it's so opposite when you start it, especially because you're super, you know what I mean? Like it's super on your shoulders to make it go. Mm -hmm. So what did you do to overcome that fear? I worked two jobs. So I did Blue Jay window cleaning and I also worked a 40 hour job for you. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, yeah, I worked seven days a week and just hustle. In the mental game of it, what does it take to, because I'm sure the fears are still there. I still have fears in all the things I'm doing, but what do you think that looks like to overcome? Um, definitely surround yourself with people that support you um, and they don't have to agree with you, but you have to have a lot of people around you that support you and, and push you too. Um, saying, you know, if you want to succeed, you got to go do this. Like just the other day I was out doing door hangers in the rain and snow. Like I am going to make this go. Yeah. And there's plenty of people that are in total agreement with me and pushing me and supporting me saying, you can do this. It's going to be great. You can do this. Yeah. I think you definitely need the support group, um, whether it's family, friends, a business coach, really anyone that you know that it has your back. Cause there's a lot of naysayers. They'll tell you that, you know, you'll never do it. It's so hard. I mean, it is hard and it's not easy, but I mean, it's the top 1%, right? They're the ones that do the things no one else wants to do, right? And so I think if you keep that mentality as you grow into it, um, I think you'll do well, Justin. So let's dig into your business a little bit. Uh, Why did you choose the name of it, Blue Jay? Um, So I've been called Jay since I was young. That's my name to pretty much everybody except for you guys. (laughs) I'm I'm a go against the grain. I don't like to do what you ask. (laughs) Um, so Jay is my, the name I've been known by for years and years and years. And then, uh, blue is my favorite color. It's my son's favorite color and it's the color of trust. Well, that's a good thing to know. What about the, the blue Jay itself? Just cause it's obvious. The yeah, logo. It, it was just something that came with the name and I was like, that would be such a good logo. Uh-huh. Okay. Very cool. Uh, what was your motivation in starting the business? Uh, motivation. I didn't want to, uh, well, I've, I've owned businesses in the past and they've failed, um, which is okay. Failure is not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Um, but just, you know, I used to, I used to clean windows under another business as well and would see how much the business would make and how much I would make. And I do know my worth. Um, and even though you have a lot of expenses up front. I know down the road, this will be better for me. It will give me more free time um, to be with my son right now. I'm still working seven days a week. 
But down the road, there's a lot of hope of having days off, enjoying life more, um, getting to be with friends more, and not only that, getting to work for you guys at my 40-hour job that I was at, um, I got to see how you guys ran a business. And that was the coolest thing ever. It's so different than any other business I've ever worked for. And I was like, I totally could run a business like this where it's so personable and intimate and you know your employees and you care about them. So I want, I want to impact people with that as well. I mean, it's cool that you mentioned that because I don't like to, uh, well, I don't even see it sometimes because I just do my stuff. But it's always fun to have people on that also know me because it's like you can tell my audience a little bit about me because they're listening to me, right? Mm-hmm. And, I mean, I can say stuff all day long. It doesn't mean you pr- you practice what you preach, right? So I think it's cool that you recognize that and that's something that's important to you in your business because I think that's how businesses are made, right? Successful businesses are made off of what you just said, taking care of your people, taking care of your clients, doing it the right way, mm-hmm. correct? Yeah. Um, let's hit on something else really fast. So you were talking about having more time off. That's, I think a lot of people go into business for that reason. They see like there's some freedom in it, right? I think as long as you have the right mindset of like, there's going to be a lot of work in the beginning, which you, like you said, you'll do what you have to do to make it go. Mm-hmm. And just remember that like, it's not, it's, what is that saying? It's like a, a um, that's not it. It's an uphill battle, but like it, it, you, in the long run, it pays off. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. And so it's like, if you just keep at it now and push that train, it will eventually get momentum and then it's going to eventually go down the hill on its own. Right. And and sometimes every business is different. I think it depends on how much time you have to dedicate to it, the right people, which is is not easy to do these days, um, finding all the right people. But if you get all that in place, I mean, it can happen within a few years where it's, it's chugging on its own. I mean, we're eight years in at the barnyard and we're finally feeling that freedom. Mm -hmm. But again, there's, you know, people leave and you obviously just went on your own. I, there's always potential for my people to do their own thing so you always have to keep that in mind that like sometimes you have to come back in again like when we if we lose another guy for example we'll have to step in like john will and he'll have to kind of help again until we get the next guy in the right seat correct yeah so i don't think it's i mean unless you're a corporation i don't think you ever fully step away from your business right but i think if you are at that stage you're in retirement because who wants to i don't know i don't know very many people that don't want to work and if you do you're just lazy so um i guess do you have any like tidbits you want to give to anyone that's looking to start their business but they're scared or they like just don't know how to get over like the procrastination because they're they're, fear is what causes procrastination because you're scared you don't know what you're doing and it makes you not want to do it yeah so do you have anything that you i mean today on the way here i was scared i'm still continually scared but you (laughs) tammy is also my business coach hello (laughs) (laughs) and uh just a couple weeks ago she knows i struggle with fear And she had me sign an agreement that says, like, I will not operate in fear. It's okay to feel the fear, but I'm not going to operate in it. You know, and so today before I left, like, wake up early and get all my stuff loaded in the car because I'm not going home after this. I'm going out to do door hangers and going out to do my thing. Um, And I, I have that paper. I have my vision board hanging up over my bed. So I see it every single day, morning and night. And that paper is right in the middle that I, I see it and I don't have to read it. I know exactly what it says. I will not operate in fear. Um, God is not a God of fear. And I want to operate in God's God's power. And he's the one that's going to gonna take care of me. Like I know I've my whole life, it's always been work, 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 work. So you can pay all your bills. But really, God's the one that takes care of all this stuff. So I'm so glad you brought God into it. Uh, to me getting the revelation of the fear part of it because we all everybody has fear right so every Mm. person that owns a business has two problems they don't have enough time they don't have enough money and then i think the third thing is fear because we all have a healthy fear right yeah i have clients i'm meeting next week that it's a big client for me and i'm actually scared i'm just like i then the the doubt comes in my mind they're like but what do i really know that's going to help these people and they're they might be a little bit older than me and i'm like i can't what (laughs) wisdom do i have to share and then i have to remember like but that's that to me, that's the devil talking to me. He's, he's trying to yeah. keep me back, right? I mean, mm-hmm. is that kind of how you see a- it? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And so it's like you have to then choose, do I want to push through that and sit? Do I want to sit back and be like, yep, I'm going to give up that opportunity because I'm just not ready? Or do I want to step forward and put myself out there and then see what happens? Because worst case, they fire me and I lose my job on that and I move to the next one. Mm-hmm. Best case, I actually help them change their life and their business, which then gives me experience. It helps grow me, right? Correct. And so I guess... Uh, and the faith part of it, as the business owner that you are and are becoming, what do you? What does that look like to help keep you in the the God aspect of it? Um, 
So obviously you have to have a budget, you know, and know where, where your numbers lie. You can't mm -hmm. just go into deficit continually. Um, but also I've heard from preachers before that if you don't give God an avenue to bless you, he's not, he can't give it to you. You know, you got to be moving. Mm -hmm. And so like, even just before we started the podcast talking about, you know, if, if I run low on money in the business, I will go DoorDash during rainy and snowy days. Um, if I'm not going to be out working for the business or I need to gain some extra cash, I can work through the nights, you know, it's, but it's all just, you know, know your numbers and trust God. Um, he really has, like, if you think about it, you've never, I've never lived under a bridge. Thank God. No. You know, I've, uh, been broke, but God always provides somehow. Yeah. I think that's all part of you though. And your drive. Because I think that's a massive thing when I'm looking at people. And this is a judgment call, of course, but I still, I, I have some instinct on it. And I can tell if someone's got it or don't. Because I'm like, you just have no energy or you're doing it for the wrong reasons. If you just, if they say, I want more money, I want to make tons of money, you're going to not make it. Because your money is going to be tight in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And you're going to put so much freaking time in that. What are you going to do with that money? You have no time to spend it right now. But there's, to me, there's other, other motivations that should go into it, right? Like the freedom to have time. The thing, like for me, it's about helping people, helping my customers. You're solving a problem, right? Like yeah. for you, window cleaning, you're solving a problem. Yeah. What is that problem, Justin? Dirty windows, dirty, dirty windows. houses. Yeah. They want to have, you know, they have a nice home and they want to keep it up. They want to maintain them. They want their friends to be like, man, your house looks, oh, that's a shitty window. I mean, yeah. who goes into someone's <laughs> house? Have you ever done that? I've been in one. And I'm like, man, your windows are nasty. It looks like you don't clean anything. <laughs> so I think if you can just keep all that in mind and then keep in the faith part of it, right? When things are not easy, especially when you're starting it the first couple of years, they say in a business the first two years, you're lucky if you're breaking even. Like most businesses lose money the first couple of years because you have so much expense going into it and yeah. you're figuring out your systems and you're making the mistakes and, you know, but you learn from those mistakes. You don't just go in the corner and cry, right? You're right. not a, well, I won't say that. Well, something else there is you had me write a vision board for the first time last year, you know, and I, I set these goals, like I, I put all, all this money and all this work into this business. And I said, by the middle of next year, I want to break even, you know, and uh, I felt God pressing on me, like, do you really not trust me enough to say like at the end of the year, which was just a couple months away, I was like, I'm thousands of dollars in on this, which is a lot to me right yeah. now. And uh, so I was like, you know what, I'm going to be brave and I'm just going to do it. The worst that happens is I push it out another six months. The best that happens is my faith is built. And and sure enough, like by November, it wasn't even the end of the year. I was over what I put into it. I My first half year in business, I made a profit, which is incredible. Yeah. And I can see it as your coach, uh, your your confidence growing, right? Because I remember when I first sat with you on the, the vision board, mm -hmm. you know, men typically are like, that's stupid. That's like a woman thing, right? And and you can look at it like that. And I think if that's your mentality and you're like, I'm just, I think it's stupid and you're not going to get anything from it because you don't believe in it. You don't put energy into it, yeah. right? And so once I kind of got you, which you bought in pretty fast, because I think you trust me, but most guys don't. And so... <laughs> A lot of times they look at me like, what? I ain't doing that. I don't, that's way, that's stupid frilly stuff, right? But I believe there's, I mean, the, the Bible says there's power in your, in your tongue. Is that the word? Life and death are in Life the power the, of the tongue. Thank you. Thank yep. you. I, I needed my husband here. He's always my <laughs> little guy with the, the scriptures. But, and it talks about your, your mouth is like a rudder of a ship, right? Like where, what you're speaking is where you're going to go. Absolutely. And I believe that with what you're putting on that vision board, because I don't just do it. And that's why I don't put it in a notebook because I don't want to fold it away and, and never look at it. I want it on my wall. So when I walk in my office, I see it. Yeah. And then I can look at it and thank the Lord for all the stuff that's on there, right? And yeah. so there's things that are survival stuff, which is where we all start. Like, I just want to get groceries this week. I want to eat out this week. I want to, I don't know, eventually get a home that has enough bedrooms for everybody or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then in time, you start to grow your vision and you start to realize, okay, well, that's now, that need has been met. The Lord has taken care of it. Now I'm going to start believing for things that are like extras. Yeah. Right? right. Whether it's taking your kids on a trip to Disneyland or I just want to have a new van for my, or a van that starts so I can get the jobs on time <laughs> yeah. or, or a van that holds the ladder. I don't know. So I think watching you, you started pretty small in your vision and I'm watching you. You're like, I'm going to redo it again. And it's fun to see that because I see you buying into what the Lord is telling you, right? There is more than enough. Your cup will overflow with him. Yeah. And it, um, I mean, you remember it took me months to get my first vision board to the point 
I think you were frustrated with me and you're like, you know, if all you can dream about is paying for groceries this month, then put it on your board. Yeah. I mean, I think I have to remember that not everybody's where I'm at because my mm-hmm. faith has changed. Eight. I was such a pessimist. Like it, the glass, that thing is half empty or whatever, right? <laughs> like it could be almost full and I'm like, it's almost <laughs> empty. But like in time, I've seen enough of my faith grow through my little things because I started in a place like you. I mean, I didn't yeah. have anything. And so it's cool though to see that. And then it's a reminder like, for me as a coach to not get frustrated because that's my own doing, mm-hmm. but to remember to find ways to push you because everybody's different. And that was what it took was just for you to start to believe where you are. Right. And yeah. then you could go from there. Yeah. So his vision board looks a little different than it used to. Yes, it does. <laughs> and I can't wait to keep checking in on you and seeing where it's at. Cause uh, bigger. And then like, I always tell him as things get checked off, check it off and then put the date. Right. Yep. And I even for last year, I took all my papers that, were completed and I folded them up and I stuck them in the corner because that's like my uh, faith building corner on my Mm -hmm. board like all this stuff has been completed yeah because it reminds you sometimes in the moments at your hardest points you're just like man god where are you yeah like sometimes you think like I don't understand where you are god I'm disappointed right now but he's always there and sometimes you need those even if it's just like you know a relationship's healed right or like you made up with your brother or whatever sometimes you need to have that on there to remind you like god came through in those moments that you didn't think was going to be possible right yeah absolutely like i was the most unforgiving a-hole in the world when i was young because i was like f you you screwed me (laughs) over i'm never talking to you again and now i'm like i'm getting too old for that mentality Mm because if you keep Mm -hmm. doing that in your life you will lose everybody because no one's going to live up to all your expectations right yeah And I think that's important too in your business, talking about expectations. You want those visions and those expectations, but you have to be a little lenient with it because sometimes you want it all today. Right. And then I see that sometimes where people are like a year in and they're disappointed in their business. And I'm like, but you did it. Your bills are paid. You didn't get everything you wanted yet, but it's going to take time to grow it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, I got stuff on there that, I mean, I've, I've talking to you, I was like, what, I think I asked you, what, what do I do if, if this doesn't happen, you Mm -hmm. know, and you're like, then you move it over to next year. So exactly. I was like, oh, I guess it's not the end of the world. Yeah. You don't want to get so focused on that. You forget that like you're, it's a progress, a progression, right? Yeah. Of like, I got to start here. You know, we all want everything today. It's, this is a society right. we live in. That's why fast food is what it is. That's why everything's got to be now. Amazon Prime got to have it tomorrow, you know? Yeah. But I think you have to remember in business, it doesn't work like that. Yeah. And that's, that's a super huge part for me because I do have that now mentality, you know? Mm-hmm. And so I've been running and running and running every day and nothing this last two weeks not a single thing and I'm like oh my gosh (laughs) um and just knowing like looking down the road this will pay off the work I do today whether I I don't need to see the answer today it will build up small things turn into big things you know the seeds you plant will grow yeah exactly um Speaking of that, we have a whole list of stuff we're going to get into. So there's a point to all this, but I'm enjoying where we're going with this so far. So when you talk about the work you're doing, what do you think when you're like at those? So Adam Lamb has a thing where he talks about like you start on the top of the hill and then you end up in the pit. So like you've started your business. Who isn't excited the day you launch? It's like, I'm going to kill it. I'm going to be great. And then you're, you know, year in or a couple years or whatever. And you start to realize like I'm in the dung right now because I don't know what's going on. I'm stressed out. I, I hate this right now. And then eventually if you keep at it and you start to realize I need better systems, I need the right people, I need to hire people, then you start to come out of that hill and it gets really great. It's sunny at the top, right? Mm -hmm. So what are you doing to prepare yourself? Because I know you're still new, so you're still probably at the top. You're in the honeymoon phase. What is it? What are you doing to just make sure you don't stay in that pit long? Because you will hit it at a moment, but you can come out of it fast. Yeah. um, Obviously looking ahead and planning. Mm -hmm. Um, So uh, you also got to prioritize what you're going to do so when you do hit that spot you're you're in a spot to be moving up i believe um because yeah valleys come and valleys go 100 percent. it's very Mm -hmm. biblical uh you will walk through valleys yeah um but also i mean i think probably the biggest thing is when life is good and this is something i'm currently going through too you Mm -hmm. know when life is good you have to keep up your relationship with god and with people that help you grow spiritually because when you hit that bottom, I mean, and I've done that in my life so many times, you hit the bottom and then you turn to God and, oh God, help me, you know, um, and now um, I'm in a different place and I'm learning in the good times is when you need to be growing that relationship with God. So when you hit those valleys, you are, you're not going to die. It's going to be okay. Um, but then I also have, you know, my bookkeeper and coach and everything and planning ahead and seeing you know, it's easy, especially in a budget. 
I'm good with numbers, but when you break it all down, like you do in bookkeeping, I'm like, oh my goodness. Um, and you can see where everything's going. You can plan ahead. You can see like forecast where mm -hmm. you're going and mm -hmm. just, just be prepared for stuff. Yeah. Speaking of numbers. So they, you live and die by your numbers, right? So businesses, I mean, I've, I don't know them super well, but I've talked to business owners and they're like, oh yeah, I'm doing $2 million a year. And I'm like, that's fantastic. But how much are you really making? Right. Because mm -hmm. some people have no idea that they're actually losing money. You can yeah. bring $2 million in the bank, but if it all went right back out, what good does that do you? <laughs> right. I mean, I see people who are killing themselves trying to run their business and their money is just not there or they're losing money. And it's like, okay, now you're doing the right things, you know, physically you're going out and doing the jobs, but now you've got to be strategically smart. You've got to start working on your business, not in your business. Yeah. Right. Because there is a transition period there when you're a new guy starting out i get it everything's on you but mm -hmm. you know you're i am impressed with you because you are not afraid to spend that, that extra money it takes to really invest in the team because you got the bookkeeper because you you just don't know how to do that and a lot of people don't know how to do that yeah and that's important because if you don't have your number straight the irs will eat you alive Absolutely. right and who wants to pay the irs money anyway <laughs> irs we don't like you you can go away um number two you have the business coach so because you know your limitations right and yeah. sometimes we don't even see our limitations even myself, I've done coaching with people and business coaching and service uh, business coaching because I'm like, I don't know the things that I don't know. Mm -hmm. And so like sometimes I'm like, man, I never even realized that I was doing that. And then a lot of times you don't realize you're the bottleneck in your business. I see that right yeah. now with some people I'm working with. I'm like, you are in the way. Like everything is coming through you. You can't keep it all going or you don't have the capacity or the interest. And now things are falling away, which hurts your business because you don't have the right people helping you. Mm -hmm. So I'm impressed with you. I think that's part of why you'll be successful because you have, you're building a foundation. Thank you. Right. Yeah. You're not just, I mean, and I, there's nothing wrong with doing it all yourself. Give yourself, but I, I mean, man, you burn yourself out fast doing that. And then it's not fun. Yeah. And like you saw me try to do a lot of that stuff mm -hmm. myself and there is stuff like bookkeeping. You know, I thought it was, yeah, you write down what you spend and you write down what you bring in and that's it. That's so not what it is. No. Um, and we spent so many coaching sessions <laughs> trying to teach me how to bookkeep <laughs> to the point that I was like, I'm going to hire you. Yeah. <laughs> and I do. And it, it gives me more time to do the stuff I need to do that I'm good at doing. Mm -hmm. And you're good at bookkeeping. And so I, I pay you mm -hmm. to do it. And it frees me up to do what needs to be done in my business. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and yeah, obviously there's some bookkeepers that are just slow as a daisy and they just there to yeah. collect the check. And that's, I think you just got to watch out for some of them. And really fast for my listeners, bookkeeping is the people that like enter your receipts. They, you know, track your expenses, they give you the reporting and then there's accountants. And actually in this day and age, I'm finding accountants don't even want to do bookkeeping for you because they don't have time for it. They're, they don't have enough uh, accountants as is. So they're mm -hmm. maxed out already, but accountants charge between 150 and $400 an hour. I mean, my accountant's like two, 300 bucks an hour. I'm at like 65. And even if you're at a hundred, you're still a hell of a lot cheaper than an accountant's going to charge. And then I just have the accountant for my taxes and like, tax questions and like, do I need to like spend money, buy something, you know, whatever. I'm not an accountant. So that's a different thing, but I think you're smart knowing that because you could spend what, two hours trying to enter just a little bit of transactions <laughs> yeah. when you can instead be out selling. Cause right now you need sales. That's where you've got to put your attention. Right. Yeah. And, and on top of it, a good bookkeeper, you've done it for me is you catch stuff like, Oh, this check did not clear. Like you got to yeah. go back to the customer and get this check. I mean, it pays itself off in the end, honestly. Or if you're one that doesn't have time or you stink at it and you're not collecting your accounts receivable. I mean, mm -hmm. you become the people's bank and why are you their bank? You're not that big, right? right? So you need someone to constantly keep on that. And if they're not paying, you need to charge them late fees and interest and whatever. And so that part right there will kill your business. Cause yeah. if you're not collecting your money, you're not getting paid. How are you going to pay your bills? Right. Right. Um, before we go back into the list of things we have, do you have anything else you want to add to this section? It's been fun just getting to see your perspective because mm -hmm. it's no, different. I, so I, I don't have anything else. Let's, okay. Let's do it. So it's, we, we're going to talk about once a business owner has successfully launched their business, there are several key areas and considerations that are required. Um, they need ongoing attention and management to ensure that the business continues to thrive and grow. So let's talk about some of those as a current business owner. And then I'll throw in my perspective as a, a little bit longer business owner. Mm -hmm. um, financial management. So we just talked a little bit about that. Uh, monitoring your cash flow, making sure that there's enough money to cover operating expenses. You want to always be doing that, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you want to review your financial statements, which is an income statement, a balance sheet, and a cash flow statement. That's going to tell you your business's health. Again, how much money am I spending? Um, there's nothing that's like in a book that tells you you need to be spending this much on this, right? Mm -hmm. They say in the service industry, which you're in, 20% is decent for like 
your advertising, fuel, yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah. So you want to be looking at and, and realizing like, wow, do I, this is gas glister, like taking all my money. Where is all my money going? Mm -hmm. Correct. So you can start to realize, okay, uh, I'm spending too much on fuel. My employees are sucking me dry or, you know, are they doing really well or what's happening there? Do I need more sales? Um, am I, can I start to take more money for myself? Is there money in the business that's saved basically, mm -hmm. right? Um, your profit that way you have future expense because sometimes in these economies that we have right now people go out of business and when you have that extra money saved in your business then you're like oh my gosh this equipment just came up it's really cheap i want to buy it yeah and that's when you want to have that cash flow there so you always as you grow you want to keep saving money right right yeah um you want to constantly looking at your expenses profitability consider reinvesting profits in the business for diversification i think another thing that's really good is because what services are you offering right now if you don't mind sharing that. See, window cleaning, gutter cleaning, house cleaning. Um, soft, house cleaning? Well, soft washing, the outside okay. of the houses. I'm not going to come outfit? do your dishes. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, ladies. He's not going to help you clean your house. Um, I'll do some dusting. Depends on the job. Um, like high dusting? Yeah. Okay. And uh, solar panels, essentially. Okay. I'm also, just this month, introduced screen repairs. Oh, okay. So, and that's, I've already gotten a couple jobs off that, which is pretty cool. That's cool. So... So I think when, when, when I'm going with this is the revenue channels that you have there. So, you know, as you, when you're super busy, you don't have time for that. But again, you need to find people to help you and then mm -hmm. you can invest yourself in the business, not on the business. So when you're in the business, you want to look at those channels and look at like, okay, screen repair. It's costing me this and mm -hmm. I'm making this. Is the margins there? I'm doing high dusting for what my techs are the time it's taking yeah. them, like, is it profitable? If there's any area that becomes unprofitable consistently, you need to dump it out of your business, right? Because why do you want to make money here to lose it over there? Absolutely. So that's again, where you start to get in the business and you figure out what's, where's my money going, right? Yeah. Like when I started the business, I had pressure washing on there mm -hmm. and that quickly went away. I will still soft wash a house, but I'm, I'm not doing pressure washing anymore. Like flat work? Yeah. Flat work, your sidewalks, your driveway. It's just, it's not worth it to the amount of, you know, it just doesn't, break even there either. yeah it's, and i mean if you have that kind of business great for you maybe you figured out a secret we don't know but i, I agree with you i think it's there's so many stains that do not come out of concrete and customers <laughs> are like that doesn't look good and they're imagining that's going to be great and clean right yeah. and so i think it's yeah it's I'm, it is a good business mm -hmm. it's just not my business yeah, yeah exactly okay um number two is customer acquisition and retention Keep a pulse on the market trends and customer preferences to adapt your offerings as needed. So again, like that, you came up with the screen repair. Like, I don't know that everybody offers that. Mm -hmm. And some people don't even realize that you can go get it done yourself or who wants to deal with that? To me, that's like, I don't know what I need to bring or yeah. whatever. So keeping an eye on, you know, what <clears throat> you can introduce to your business that will help bring in more revenue. Yeah. Do you have any, I don't know, like, so in the barnyard, we've introduced spray foam. That's something new mm -hmm. we added, right? Some people do accessories like shutters and cupolas, I think they're called. But to me, it's just not necessary out here. No one does that really. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you can always keep your eye open for other things you can bring in that make sense to put with your business. Um, in this case, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. But it's always good because it's another way to like, right? Like with my coaching, I do coaching. I do consulting. I brought bookkeeping in. I'm doing a phone center for mm -hmm. certain businesses that I want to work with. So it's always ways to bring more revenue and but again i have to now in a year from now i'm going to look at those and say was that worth the energy the time and did it bring me money because if it doesn't i'm going to dump something off yeah, right right yeah um you want to maintain and enhance customer relationships through excellent customer service so for you justin what does that look like um talking with your customers honestly there's a, a lot of businesses that don't they just do the job and they're done um but you know i i call and remind customers of their upcoming appointments i call <laughs> I call after the job is done and make sure everything was perfect. Um, and if it's not perfect, I fix it right then. I've had a single complaint and I had some my, uh, my tech back out there within an hour, like we need to fix this right now. And then they left me a five-star review, you know? Exactly. It's, it's perfect. That, those repeat, or not repeat, what do we call those? Um, calling them back, basically. Callbacks. Yeah. Yeah. Like if you are checking in, like have your office people or even you worst case, cause your tech should be checking with them before they leave. Like, mm -hmm. is everything good? But sometimes they see something after and instead yeah. of just being mad about it, if you call them and say, Hey, did everything go good? I want to make sure. And they're like, Oh no, you missed a spot. Or I saw something after the tech left. You can go back and ensure that five-star service and Absolutely. that will set you apart in your business. Yes. Okay. What else do you have? What else do you do there? Um, uh, get to know them, ask them, 
I mean, mostly it's about talking to them and getting, getting their feelings and thoughts. I have customers, you know, once they found out I started my business, they said, you know, can I, can I feed into your business? Can I tell you what I didn't like about other businesses? And I'm like, absolutely give it to me. And they put that stuff in there and I put specific notes in that customers in my CRM. Um, you know, this person doesn't like the emails constantly Mm -hmm. haggling them for a review. Um, they don't like this and this and this, but they do like this, you know, and so I'll put those notes in there. So I know specifically for those customers when I'm dealing with them or talking with them, what they do and don't want, and I can treat them as an individual, you know, and everybody's different. Everybody has different preferences, but that's really smart, Justin. I, your competitors are going to love that knowledge. I'm telling you hundred percent, but it's okay. Cause you know what? The Lord's going to take care of you, Justin. Hundred percent. No, I think that's really good because even then as you grow it and you get an office person or you hire a call center or whatever, when you have those specific notes, we can see those mm-hmm. and then we can be like, okay, this one customer is very picky, right? Or they're very, they hate dogs or they don't like Justin. Mm-hmm. They don't want him there or whatever. <laughs> Because you have people that don't always get along. And yeah. it's good to know, like, don't send Jimmy because they don't like Jimmy. But they love Susan, right? And so if they can have a favorite tech, send the tech to them. Why not yep. Why not meet their needs? Because they're going to be more happy with you. And then your lifetime value of that customer, they're going to stick with you longer, right? And then they Absolutely. bring more money. And remember, once you, you know, you may advertise to get that first customer, but after the first job, that's paid for. Now, every job after is technically free to right. you because you've already paid for them. And that's why you keep them. Because it's expensive to constantly acquire new customers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it really is. good, Justin. I like that. Thanks. Yeah, and it's not it's not about just having those notes in there. Like you actually have to read them before yeah. you call the customer, and you have to implement it. Having the notes don't do anything. No. Yeah. If you have people that ignore everything and don't care about the details, yeah, then you're going to be in trouble. And that's where it's good to make sure your office people are detail oriented. Because they will kill you. I'm telling you, if they're running your schedule and they don't know what the hell they're doing, you're going to hate your life. <laughs> and then your text, they need to be smart enough to be able to at least read. Yeah. Right? Because they need to read what does that say. Mm-hmm. Right? Don't, I, I mean, I, I have so many stories I can tell you, but <laughs> okay, we're going to continue. Um, let's talk about marketing strategies really fast to attract new customers while retaining existing ones. So I'm curious if you have any bright ideas and if there's stuff you don't want to share, that's fine. But do you have any marketing ideas that you've ran into lately or you think... Um, not a lot of ideas there. I'm pretty basic in Mm -hmm. what I'm doing. Um, I do know a very important part to it is spending your downtime wisely. Mm -hmm. Um, cause you know, like we just, we're coming out of winter now and that was, that was the time to get all that stuff put into place, get all the marketing materials built in my computer. So when I do need them, I don't have to go spend days building them. I have them ready to go. My door hangers and flyers and, um, pamphlets, everything you need for advertising in any way. You're prepped and you're locked and loaded. You're yeah. ready to go hunting. Yeah. And I can go in and submit my order and go back to work. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to throw in a little tidbit about this because I have some experience um, from past nightmares I lived. Um, so the winter time comes. So if you're a service business, I mean, I think all businesses probably have it. I don't, I mean, I'm not every business, but my businesses have it where there is certain seasons that are slower. Now, I don't shut down my businesses. I don't think you're going to shut down. I mean, some people do, but I don't, I think it's ridiculous. Uh-huh. Keep going as much as you can. Um, so anyway, so the barnyard, the winter time tends to, it's not dead, but it slows down, right? Yeah. For at least a couple of months and every year is a little different, but I know I tell my office people and my production, my production builds stock sheds, right? So that's what we're going to build. My office, I tell them we need to get our crap in a pile. Like anything we're, we're lacking or we're struggling with, let's fix it because I want everything ready to go. So when we enter the ball game, right? When the, the season starts, we're ready. I don't want to be yeah. like, oh, well we're swamped and now everything's a mess. No, that's not happening. That's why you have to take that time in the winter or whatever season it is for you. If it's summer, I mean, every business is a little different, but you take that time and get your stuff ready, right? You yeah. start like, it's like off season for sports. They, they still train. They don't go home and sit on the couch and drink right. beers, right? And I know people that do that. And I'm like, you're an idiot. I know you've worked hard all summer. Yeah, you don't have to work the same hours, but you need to keep working in the business now. And they, they get lazy and they don't want to work. They hibernate, I say. And I'm like, you're, an, you're a moron because now you're sitting there lazy and then you're super sluggish to get going in the spring. You don't want to start. You've done nothing to prepare yourself. You've not worked on your business. And then it's just not going to go well for you. Yeah. And, uh, that, that is hard. That was hard. Um, working seven days a week through the winter. And I was like, I have all winter to prepare for this stuff. And I, I would force myself. It was sometimes very painful. Like go do this, stand in front of your computer for 10 hours today and just get this done and out of the way. And it took a lot of 
push um, mm-hmm. personally. And I kept telling myself, like, don't lose momentum. Don't lose momentum. If you lose your momentum, you will die. Truth. You know, and uh, don't drop my mic, though. Yeah, right. I won't. <laughs> I'm not holding it. <laughs> I'll fall backwards. Um, yeah. And the other the other part on the marketing thing is I ask every customer and I document it. Where did you hear about us? Um, How did you find us? You know, and then I document those in multiple places and you can figure out where where you need to put that money at. Um, mm-hmm. And so just the other day, um, I invested more money into a certain marketing area, which uh-huh. shows that I get good customers. Um, my sales rate on those customers are actually pretty good. And so I just the other day put extra money into this specific, specific marketing area, which Great. is showing a good ROI. And can you tell everybody what ROI stands for? Return on investment. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So um, there's obviously... You can use Excel, you can really simplify it, but I think it's good to see every single channel every month and then an annual view of it as well. So basically what you need is in our business, your business even. So because I had that kind of business, I know it well, but yeah. it's like you take, you write down how many leads came in off of Facebook or how many leads came in off of Google or whatever yeah. you're doing. And then how many you actually closed? How many did you win? How much money did you bring in from those wins, right? Mm-hmm. You brought in $2,000 in revenue and then you do all the calculation, but it's dividing it, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then you divide it out and then you realize, okay, I spent $5,000 on Facebook and my jobs brought in 10,000. That would be a, I suck at math. 100%. 100% return. Thanks, Justin. You wouldn't think I was a bookkeeper. (laughs) 200%. I don't know. I pay you. (laughs) I have no idea. I don't do percents. Well, I have a program for that. That'll tell me. Um, But that's what you want to do because then you can watch and and you don't, every month can just a little bit, right? Like it could be just a weird month. That's why Mm -hmm. you do the annual as well. So I wouldn't just throw it away because you had one bad month. Right. But like annually too, you want to look at it and say, okay, overall, you know, Google killed it. Facebook sucked. Uh, I don't know. Clip ads did really well. Door yeah. hangers killed it. And then, you know, next year I'm going to base my budget on this. I'm going to put extra money into Google or I'm mm-hmm. going to put extra money into door hangers. And then you can be like, you know, in my experience, magazines sucked. I still don't like magazine <laughs> advertising because yeah, rich people look at them, but I don't know. We never did well with them. So that's my tip, but you might do well with them, but we didn't. Or to me, it's like, I had a guy come to me. Do you want to put a an ad in the bathroom urinal. I was like, no, that's not my demographic. I don't need it in the bar urinal. Thank you though. That's for like Viagra ads or something. I don't know. <laughs> so anyway, always do that marketing ROI cause you want to know. And then have you ever done a marketing calendar? No, I haven't yet. Now, obviously it, t- it takes a lot of time. That's where we did it in the winter, but we went ahead and like marked out, you know, these are the holidays that we want to do a coupon for, or these are, I don't know men's hair growth day or something there's all these weird days if you get there's a calendar you can buy in google it'll tell you all the weirdest there's a day for everything it seems like (laughs) so it's like if you want to hit some of those for fun or you want to post certain things on social media about like it's national holiday cake day or whatever Mm -hmm. then you can put an ad out but it's good to know what's coming up and then you can specifically start to design your ads i mean you can get really granular with it but bare minimum you should be like in march well i don't know what's in march what's the holidays in march do you have any idea my son's birthday Nobody cares. No, I'm kidding. I care. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Okay, February. We'll do that. Valentine's Valent- Day is coming up. And if you want to be like, spoil your loved one with a window cleaning so your poor wife or poor husband's not on the ladder falling off, here's a coupon or whatever. So you can at least know there's some things I got to advertise for. And then you can start to get ready for them. Because in the winter, you have the time for mm-hmm. it. When you're out cleaning windows and it's like, I don't even know, Memorial Day, and you're like, oh, I'm so stressed out. I forgot to do the ad. It's too late. Now I missed that window. You don't want to leave it to last minute because you don't have time for it. Right. That way, like, I would get the calendar once a month at the beginning. and be like, okay, this is March. We have four ads we're going to put out. I need to get these in a couple of weeks before, right? Mm-hmm. Or at least you can get your office people working on it, right? Because you right. shouldn't always have to be doing that. But you want to prepare because when you get in that busy season, there's no time to think, Yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I even thought about that, you know, thinking Valentine's Day is coming up and some husbands are probably going to get their wives window cleanings. I haven't had a single Valentine's Day window cleaning, you know, and I yeah. I think next year, because I will have another winter before then, I am going to work on a calendar for that in my downtime. Yes. And thinking, you know, it probably have a much better impact if you remind people Valentine's Day is coming up. What wife doesn't want a clean house? Yeah. You know, and just push that. Yeah. And then just track it on your ROI stuff, right? Yeah. So you set your budget because you're also going to need to know these numbers for your budget. Like if you have 50 grand and you're spending for advertising where am i putting it you don't want to just throw stuff at the wall you want to target right because if you what is that saying if you have no target you hit what is that they you hit oh god 
Aim you, small, miss small. Something like that. Like if you have nothing <laughs> to hit at or aim at, you're going to miss it every time. You Unless know, you use a shotgun. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> <laughs> like you got to have direction. You got to yeah. know what you're going for. Because, I mean, you want to tell, I think Dave Ramsey says you want to tell your money where to go, right? Like, Absolutely. You need to know where your money is going. And like, you don't want to just randomly throw stuff out. Yeah. So that way, you know, like for us, we're doing billboards. I'm tracking how many calls mm-hmm. I'm getting. And then at the end of the year, I can make my decision. Do I want to put all that money in billboards? Right. I did TV for a little while. For me, I didn't love it. It yeah. does get your business attention, but it didn't really sell sheds for us. So at the end of the day, I kind of cut back on that and I'm doing more billboards or whatever. So that's all part of, you know, just making sure you've got your plan, your budget, you know, how much you're going to spend. And then as I always tell you, it's a rolling budget. So you can always, if you start to realize like, Ooh, this has been a little bit rougher year mm-hmm. than I thought, just pull back on the money. You can adjust really quick, right? right? Which is a business. You have to adjust on the fly. So. Yeah. And like, uh, I just took a picture of me and my cruddy looking car the other day. Someday it'll be awesome. Of course. But yeah, no, uh, every dollar has a name is what mm-hmm. I say. Um, That's good. And you have to have it labeled where it's going. You have to know where it's going and then know what it brings in as well. And so I would love to make my car look a little nicer, but honestly, that's not where I'm getting any, I'm not making money from that right now. Yeah. So right now I'm investing in folders, door hangers, and all different advertising areas. You know, Mm -hmm. that's what's bringing in more money. So, yeah, I mean, that's preference, but I think it's also smart because you can have everything sharp and pretty on the outside, but what's happening on the inside, right? Yeah. Like it could be a total disaster where it's like, I put all my money in this car, but I'm broke and I have no folders and I can't even do a door hanger because it's my, but my car looks pretty. Well, who cares, (laughs) right? You got to have your priorities correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're, we're going to break this into two episodes, I think, today. So for this episode, we are done right now, but I hope you come back. We're going to finish this conversation. We have a bunch more stuff we want to go over. So for this one, we thank you for listening. Check me out. Uh, I'm on everywhere, basically. iHeartRadio, Apple. Like, subscribe, follow, share with your friends. And if you have any questions or concerns or you want to tell me a great thing that happened to you, you can email me at lightupyourbusinessllc at gmail.com. We will see you on the next one. And remember, in the world of business, every success story begins with a passionate dream and ends with a strategic billion-dollar handshake. Stay ambitious, stay innovative, and keep making those deals that reshape tomorrow. Thank you all for tuning in, and until next time, remember Proverbs 3.3 says, Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. That way, you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. And remember, if you like what you heard today, click the follow button so you never miss an episode. Are you ready to take your small business to new heights? With Faithful Coaching, you'll receive personalized guidance rooted in both practical business know-how and deep faith-based principles. Picture this, achieve your goals with clarity, purpose, and unwavering faith. That's what our expert coaches specialize in. Whether you're just starting out or looking to expand, our tailored coaching programs are designed to meet you where you are and propel you forward. Say goodbye to overwhelm and self-doubt and hello to confidence and success. Join the Faithfield Coaching family today and step into the abundant future you've always envisioned. Visit faithfieldcoach.com to schedule your free 30-minute consultation. Let's make your dreams a reality together.